Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Lemoyne again, and today we're going to be doing illustrative math, grade 5, unit 6, lesson 8, add and subtract fractions. All right. Which one doesn't belong? Which one doesn't belong? Well, I can see that I could choose A because it doesn't have any numbers. Um, it doesn't belong. It doesn't show what the whole is, right? So I see some tape diagrams, but no numbers on them. Or, or I could choose B. B does not belong because it doesn't stop at 1, right? It goes 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds, 6 thirds. And then underneath I have 1 6 2 6 3 6 4 6 5 6 6 6 7 6 8 6 9 6. So I know from previous lessons in last year that 3 thirds is 1 and 6 6 is 1, right? But it doesn't stop at 1, does it? I could choose C. C does not belong because it doesn't show any 6, right? Over here I have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here we have sixths, we have thirds and thirds. Here we have thirds, but I don't have any sixths. I have twelfths, it's thirds and twelfths. And of course, D doesn't belong because it only shows one representation of fractions. Everybody else has two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and this one only has one. It is divided up into sixths, however. So I could have chosen any one of those as long as I can um, explain my thinking, right? Describe my thinking. All right, let's get rid of what my notations were and see what else they have for us. How do the diagrams B and C help us see the relationship between thirds, sixths, and twelfths? Well, we just kind of talked about that already, right? Three thirds is going to be the same as six sixths. So I can see that there is a relationship there, right? One third is the same as two sixths. Two thirds is the same as four sixths and so on. I could go across here, right here. So that's the relationship between thirds and sixths. Over here, let's see, I can see that a third is one, two, three, four twelfths. Twelfths. Here a third is another four twelfths. And here a third is another four twelfths. So a third here is going to be the same as four twelfths. That's going to be the same as two sixths. So all of these are equal: one third, two four twelfths, and two sixths. All right, interesting. All right, that was our warm up. Let's see what else they have for us. Your teacher is going to give you a set of cards that show expressions. Sort the cards into two categories of your choosing. Be prepared to explain the meaning of your cards and then sort them into two different. So we have to sort them two different ways. All right, so again, I'm going to go to my, here we go. Here are the cards, and I put them in ABC order. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So I have to figure out what, what how do I want to categorize these? Well, the most obvious way to me is let's put all the subtraction together. So those are all subtraction, and here's all the addition. And I can tell my partner or my teacher that that's the way I sorted those. Another way that I could sort them, let's think, I could sort them. These have mixed numbers. These do not. These have mixed numbers. These do not. So I could do the same thing for the addition. And those all have mixed num all do not have mixed numbers. So that's another way I could have sorted them. Um, I could sort them with ones that have the same denominator. So these both have fifths. These do not, right? These have a four and an eight. That's different. These are the same. These both have sevens as denominators. These have different ones, different ones. And these have the same. So these all have the same denominators and these have different denominators. So there are three different ways that I just sorted those into categories. Okay, let's see what else they ask us to do. All right, so I shared the different ways that I sorted the cards. You can share with your class as well and your teacher. Um, now they're asking me two-thirds minus one-third. 
how could you find the value of this expression? Well, if I had two thirds and I just took away one third, I know that I could just subtract the two and the one, and I would be in, end up with one third, right? A third and a third is two thirds. All right, let's see what they ask us to do next. Well, now they're asking me to take one sixth away from two thirds. How could I do that? How could I do that? That's a lot different because they're not both thirds, are they? They're not both thirds. Why is it finding the value of this expression different? Thirds and sixths aren't the same, so I can't take thirds away from sixes, just like I couldn't take yards away from feet unless I had them all, either all yards or all feet. Unless the denominators are the same, I cannot subtract them. All right, so in this activity, we're going to learn how to do that. Okay, so here we have two-thirds plus two-thirds. Well, I have all thirds together, so I know that I could just add thirds and thirds, right? So two-thirds and two-thirds, I'm going to have four-thirds. Two plus two is four, and they're all in thirds. Again, I don't know how to take two-thirds and subtract one-sixth. Whoops, sorry about that. Let's go back a couple of slides there, girls and boys. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I am going to move over one, and I'm going to look at this chart again. So let's do this. Let's erase what I had. Here we go. So the first problem that I had was two-thirds plus two-thirds. So if I had two-thirds, so that's one, two, and I added two more, one, two, I get to four-thirds, don't I? Just like when we were counting as a child. Two-thirds, one, two, two more thirds. All right. But now they're asking me to add two, I'm sorry, subtract two-thirds, and they want me to take away a sixth. Well, I'm going to, I can't take thirds away from sixths. So what could I do? What is two-thirds on my chart? Two-thirds is the same as four-sixths. So what if I took four-sixths and took away one-sixth? So four-sixths and I take away one-sixth. Remember, each one of these is a sixth. That would give me three-sixths. So I think the important thing to, to note in this part right, right here, two-thirds minus one-sixth is the same as four-sixth minus one-sixth because two-thirds and four-sixths are the same thing, right? But now that I've converted this to sixth, I can subtract. Now what do you notice, what do you notice the similarities between these two are? How, what could I do to this fraction to get to this fraction? Let me erase this. It's getting a little crowded, okay? So what could I do to two-thirds to get to four-sixths? Well, I notice that if I multiply two over two, two times two is four, three times two is six. That gives me four-sixths. They're equivalent fractions, so if I multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, they be, they're still equivalent. They're still equivalent, the same thing, right? All right. Let's see the next one that they ask. So the next one that I have on my list that they ask, I don't have that on this number line, but I love using this number line, so I'm going to keep it up. So we found the answer to 2 thirds plus 2 thirds, and now we found the answer to 4 sixths minus 1 sixth. Our next problem that they ask us to add is two-thirds plus one-half. Oh, my goodness. Well, there are no halves on here, are there? There are no halves on either one of these charts. Could I find a half? Is there any one on here that would be the same as a half? So I know that two-thirds is here. Two-thirds is the same as four-sixths. 
Well, I noticed that three sixths is the same as a half, isn't it? So if I add four sixths, which is the same as two thirds, plus three sixths, which is the same as a half, I should be able to get the answer, shouldn't I? So let's try that. So four sixths plus one, two, three sixths would be seven sixths, which is the same as one and one sixth. Ooh, that's a lot of thinking. And good thing that I had this number line in front of me. That's kind of hard, isn't it? Because there wasn't a half on there. There wasn't a half on there. But because I had this number line here, I remember that two-thirds is the same as four-sixths. So I changed two-thirds to four-sixths. And I remember that half is the same as three-sixths. So I changed one-half to three-sixths. So then I just added 4 plus 3 is 7, or I skipped over on my number line. That one was a little bit trickier, and good thing I had that number line, right? All right, let's see what they ask us to do next. How did you find the value of 2 thirds plus 2 thirds? Well, it was thirds and thirds, so I just added them. I didn't need to find the equivalent fraction to, to make the denominators the same. How was the sum different from the other two sums? For one, I had thirds and thirds, so I could just add them. For a second one, it was thirds and sixes, so I had to change the thirds to sixes. Here, I had to change both the thirds and the half to sixes in order to be able to, to add. So remember, I changed this to sixes. So the way I can think about that is I can do it this way, 2 thirds plus 1 half. So I want to change them all to sixes so that I can add them. So how can I make this a 6? I'm going to multiply by 2. If I multiply the bottom times 2, I have to multiply the top times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. I need this number here to be 6, 2, so I'm going to multiply that times 3. 2 times 3 is 6, so 3, I have to multiply the top times 3, 2, so that's going to be that. Now I can add them because they're all 6's. We use the number line, but I can use this method too, and then I wouldn't have to have a number line, right? We have to convert them all to 6's so that we can change all of them. To the same number, same denominator. The denominator. Okay. We'll do a lot of practice with that. How is your strategy for finding this sum different than the other problems? Again, I had to have the same denominator in order to add them or subtract them. Why is having a common denominator helpful when adding or subtracting? When all the parts have all the same size, I can just add or subtract the number of parts, just like we did when we were doing uh, the customary unit. Today we compared different strategies for adding and subtracting fractions. Describe how you would find this sum, the value of this sum. Well, I need the denominators to be the same. So what I would do is I would take 2 fifths and add it to 3 tenths but I need all the denominators to be the same. And then notice that five is a factor of 10. So what could I multiply five times to get 10? And this one already has a denominator of 10, doesn't it? So five times what is 10? Five times two is 10. So if I multiply five times two, I have to multiply the numerator times two as well, and that would be four tenths. 4 plus 3 is 7 tenths. So in this case, I had to make the 5, the denominator of 5, a denominator of 10. And I didn't have to change this denominator at all because I needed them to both be 10. Okay. Now let's get to our cool down. Now we have to add and subtract two different fractions with denominators that are not the same. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack them up, 5 sixths minus 1 third. 
and I'm going to ask myself, what is a denominator that I can make them both with the least amount of work, right? I know that three is a factor of six, and I know that if I multiply three times two, I can get six. Then they're all six, and then I can subtract. So if I multiply the denominator times two, I have to multiply the numerator times two. So five minus two is three six. I also notice that three is half of six, so that's the same as one half. So the answer to this one is three six or one half. Now to add, let's get a different color so that we can see the differences. To add these two, I'm going to have to do the same thing. I'm going to take them and I'm going to stack them up on one another so that I can see what can I make a common denominator. Well, I noticed that two, I can make this 2 of 4, couldn't I? I can multiply that times 2 over 2. 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. Now they're all fourths, so I can add them. 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 fourths. And I know that 5 fourths is the same as 1 whole and 1 fourth. So I could do either answer and get that correct. This is going to take a lot of practice, right? And a lot of maybe even drawing those tape diagrams or number lines to help me understand how to do this. But it is doable. All right, thank you boys and girls for watching again. Remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you again on lesson number nine, more practice with adding fractions.